Okay, we are reading Humming Effect, Chapter 5. We are on the last part of Chapter 5. And the topic is Humming a Song. Shimangla? Yeah. yeah. Your mic. We can't hear you. Humming a Song. This exercise, like the other exercises in this chapter, allows you to experience the resonance of different hums in your body. But it can be a more engaging way of practicing since it calls for an activity that you've probably done many times, though may not have been conscious of the resonance of the sound while you were doing it. So now, see, this is important. When we are humming, when we are doing something, when we do it with conscious awareness, the effect is totally different. So what we are attempting here is we are going to hum with awareness. So when I'm humming, I can feel the vibration. I can I can understand what it is doing. I can set an intent with the hum. Now that makes it very powerful. Take a few slow, deep, diaphragmatic breaths, releasing any stress or tension in your body. Begin to hum a song. It can be any song or perhaps just a part of the song. A children's nursery rhyme can work well. Or you can make up your own song. Humming any tune that feels good. It doesn't really matter what is important is to feel the difference in the resonance as you hum. Hum the song for five minutes. Okay. At the end of five minutes, as you did for the other exercises, Check yourself out and see how you are feeling. Relax. Enjoy the space you are in. <clears throat> Allow another five minutes to ground yourself, bringing your awareness to your surroundings and coming back into your body. When you bring your attention to the vibrations of your humming, you begin to cultivate a new awareness of your body and its relationship to sound. You may have been humming all your life, but you may not have understood until now how the various notes in a song can vibrate different parts of your body. As always, there are no right or wrong notes when you are humming in this manner. Okay, so would you like to hum or we can move ahead? You can do this on your own. Move There's ahead. a hand up. Yeah, so I think... You all can do this on your own. There is yeah. a hand up. Yeah. Yes, Mamaji. Uh, what is the meaning of grounding here? Grounding, again, we, we tell you to ground. Na. I tell people, go hug a tree. After meditation. Uh, after med So this is the same thing. Grounding means that you're reconnecting with your physical body. You're reconnecting with the earth. You're reconnecting with the 3D environment that we are living in. Okay, that is drinking water and... Drinking water, you can uh, do a little jumping around, you can have a shower, you can eat something, you can go hug a tree, you can go and walk in grass. All these are basically grounding exercises. Okay. Any simple exercise for grounding? <laughs> like these, whatever you are... It can be as simple as going to have a shower and eating some food, washing your face with water... Uh, uh, food is simple. Yeah, so eating food is also a grounding exercise. Okay, fine. Thank you. Anything that connects you to the physical thing, that becomes grounding. Which brings you back into this form. Touching the floor and touching the wall is also grounding? Absolutely. So touching things is grounding. Of course it is. Okay, thank you. Summary. Please take your time when doing these exercises. They may seem simple, but the exploration of the power of sound is an eye-opening experience. It is not the destination, but rather the journey that matters. You may find that you may want to spend a week or perhaps even weeks working with these exercises. And you may find that each time you do them, your experience is different. So as we do the exercises, our body gets more tuned. Our awareness becomes more tuned. We, we can observe more subtle shifts 
because now we are paying attention so that's why every time you do the exercise you have a different experience with the exercise now this is also the reason what we find that whenever anyone repeats one of the monroe programs their experience automatically gets deeper and deeper and deeper because now you are used to those expanded states of consciousness and you can use them in the way that you can use them it's as simple as that as we begin to become aware of the resonance of the different vibrations of the sounds we hum we become more attuned to sounds as we become more sensitive and begin to feel the sounds resonate in our bodies our ability to use the self created sounds of humming for health and happiness becomes more and more active and powerful so as we start using any technique we we can start assessing what is working for us and what is not working for us and as we start getting attuned to that we can start using it more powerfully for our own benefit the more attuned your sensitivity and the greater your ability to feel the sound the more effective these exercises and the activity of humming will be for you if possible keep a notebook and pen nearby while you doing these and all the other exercises in this book write down any thoughts or experiences you may have we find journaling after humming to be helpful in remembering your experience of sounding and it is something that we both highly recommend so again journaling becomes important that's why after every meditation also i tell people journal journal means write down your experience what were the nuances you felt what happened at that time because when you write it down you are activating more senses you are writing so the kinesthetic is activated the visual is activated the thinking is activated the seeing is activated so what happens is that when you go into that particular experience again it becomes easier for you to start access, accessing those experiences that's why making notes is a very good thing may i ask a question yeah please uh in this book they're constantly talking about humming for 5 minutes that humming uh, with your eyes yeah. shut and with proper intent is for 5 yeah. minutes Yeah. What if we do it longer? I mean, do you have to put an alarm for five or six? No, 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 no. So that was the first chapter in which we actually practicing humming. Yeah. So she, what they are saying is that you just experience it for five minutes. Okay. And then you be still for five minutes. So let the energy sink, and yeah. then because you are going into that, it is shifting you into an altered state. Yes. you need to be you you can become woozy for someone who's not used to that expanded state where it is shifting you yes. because number one see we are not used to concentrating on humming then we are not used to being aware of what is happening in our body you understand we are most of the time we are out there we are not yes. in our body yeah that is what zia is talking about in somatic intelligence which she brings out so beautifully that we are totally disconnected from our body you get that now when we start becoming aware of our body the body can give us a lot of information the body is so sensitive that it is not funny i mean I, we have done these experiments over and over let's say you are you have an envelope in your hand just by feeling your breathing or feeling when we do that wall experiment where you know you shake against the wall by just yeah. observing your body you'll get to know whether there's good news or bad news in the body system mm -hmm. now today what is kinesiology we've spoken about kinesiology before in awareness but what was dattatreya ji doing yesterday basically he was doing kinesiology he was doing muscle testing right so he was becoming a surrogate for a particular person and then asking the right questions so whenever he hit the right question the surrogate body became strong so if he is figuring out that okay which year did this problem start so he is counting i can do the same thing with the antenna yes you get that so today you could do it intuitively because you could the the antenna or pendulum or that you could have the ring in your head so when are you becoming strong so now what are, what are you sensing the body is sensing these nuances 
and then you are just being able to consciously read them now we are not used to doing that so it it creates a kind of a sensory overload in the in the system and this is one of the reasons also in after zia's program many people started feeling tired because you are not used to that sensory overload you are not used to paying attention you know we take things for granted but when we pay attention the whole i mean the situation and the way that you are uh, connecting with something totally takes an about turn it takes a shift so that is why he is doing that here now of course as you get used to it it's like today is f10 any big deal for you no okay bye but now today when we do the excursion and the first time you did f10 what was it for you It was a big deal, right? Yeah. You felt like out of the world. Hmm. But now F10 has like become normal. So as we start doing something, the more resilient we become about that, and then that becomes our normal state. So it's like raising the bar all the time. So you start with five minutes, and then if you want, you can extend it. Okay. Okay. That's what. That's the reason why it's the first time that you are doing this with conscious yeah, awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Forget humming. अपने सांस भी नहीं लेते हैं consciously. Yeah, absolutely. He was talking about breathing in the beginning, right? The first thing that he said, you have to be consciously aware of your breathing. Yeah. Now in every पद्धति they talk about the breath. Yes. मतलब you take it anywhere, even in Monroe, what is resonant tuning? You have to take a deep breath to do it, right? So it's breathing. So every पद्धति is talking about breath. the more aware we are of our breath and you can't hum without your breath so again the same thing okay thank you yeah. shivangla ho okay. gaya next chapter yeah chapter 6 hari veet in our next chapter you will experience the power of the hum in more advanced exercises in the meantime remember the primary exercises in this chapter and keep humming so in this chapter we did that you maintain a monotone then you chant for some time and then he said that you can hum a song you can you can feel the vibration in various places of your body first was just a hum second was you feel the vibration the third was you hum hum a song and feel the vibrations in various places now this is like a b c d of humming so naturally we need to take a b c d to go into the higher i, I mean activities number 6 encoding intent intermediate humming in this chapter we will focus on adding the power of intention to the hum we will we like to think of this as conscious humming you may find that this added component greatly increases your ability to feel the vibrations of sound in your body as well as enhancing the healing power of your hum so we are humming but now we are going to add intent into the hum so it becomes more powerful as we noted in chapter 4 in our discussion of the formula formula frequency plus intent is equal to healing shimangla your mic in using sound for healing we have experienced that intent is as important as the actual sound you create and while we are using the term intent you could just as easily substitute the word belief purpose visualization feeling or any of a multitude of other terms that mean similar things unique vibratory begin beings a dilemma with instructing you in how to actually encode intent onto sound is this we are all unique vibratory beings and what works for one person does not necessarily work for another so this is extremely important okay we are all unique we all have our nuances like for example what what a, a house which may be right for one person may be totally wrong for another what food may suit one person may be totally wrong for another so we are all unique so we have to kind of you know jack into we have to kind of figure out 
what works for us that's it that is why it is extremely important to figure out what works for you one one uh, set works for everyone does not work i have seen that it just does not work okay one diet plan may work for one person another diet plan will work for another person so we all have our own systems some people are visual and some people are kinesthetic for some hearing is the greatest vehicle they possess for sensing okay now this is also important we did uh, a, a session on dermatology it was not called dermatology it was dermatolo dermatographic graphology or whatever in that it was a wonderful thing i don't know how many of you have attended that talk it was pretty early in the uh, session that it was yeah uh, dermatographics dermatographics yeah so in that what happens is that you take your fingertips this may in the fingerprint there are you you can have a cone or you can have a, a, a spiral or you can have a circle a chakra and using that they could they can predict what would be your style of learning what kind of activity would suit you the best and then you can be channelized to going into that kind of activity i found it extremely fascinating in fact we bought the equipment also but unfortunately because of corona i don't have many fingers to test it on but naturally we have to send the data to them then they will de decipher the data and de give it to us it is absolutely fascinating so when when they say na some some people are more kinesthetic some people are he hearing is the greatest uh, sense they possess for sensing so with me she said that you you are an auditory learner so you hear and you learn the best when you hear which is a fact i hear and i make a note but i learn the maximum by hearing other people some people like to read more some people uh, uh, like to feel more some people like to experience more so like that you can we all have a way of sensing and learning for others it is something else in our workshops we often ask if anyone is allergic to penicillin and indeed usually anywhere from 5 to 20% of our participants are allergic after we take a quick count of those who are allergic to penicillin we say well if everything is in a state of vibration and can be construed as a frequency then that includes penicillin it looks like 80 to 95% of you will find penicillin's frequency quite healing but it also looks like between 5 and 20% of you will find it toxic and potentially deadly so again something works, something works for some people and something doesn't work for other people so one man's poison is another man's amrit okay so it works like that there's a hand up yes mama ji boliye you can unmute you could, iska matlab to hai hum jo kuch bhi khate peete hain sabki frequencies rehti hai agdam 100% rehti hai and it is the frequency which acts on our body naturally you are imbibing the energy of that uh, uh, thing like uh, as i explained before even when we are breathing we are actually breathing in the light we are breathing in bio photons that is how maximum energy comes now when you take food when we've taken the trillion photographs of food is taken they there is a light which is being emitted by the food now as the food starts to rot you'll find that the light in the in the fruit or the in the vegetable or whatever the food is that starts to get reduced and you can actually see that some food is dead it is not worth it for you so is what are you eating what is it because of this that we have this rajsik tamsik and satvik khana it no, must be according to the that, no that's a different vibrations nahi kya vibrations are there but when, what he is asking is that when we are eating food we get energy from the food and the vibe yes actually speaking each food has its own vibration so when you eat the food you are imbibing that vibration into your system okay now having said that forget the vibration of the food the person who is cooking the food what is the vibration that person is emitting is also in the food are you getting that yeah 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 
so that's why the the thought process of what is happening with your cook becomes extremely important nahi isliye humne hamare kitchen mein wo laga rakha hai jisme 24 ghante wo chalta rehta hai naam jab are wo chalta rehta hai lekin aapka jo cook hai the cook should engage with that also yes it will help राजू बाबा पूरा चंगुल में आ गए अभी तक नहीं मेरे को तो मेडिटेशन में बहुत आनंद आया मंजुला भाभी यू हैड अ क्वेश्चन हां भैया आई हैड अ क्वेश्चन जैसे आप कह रहे हैं वाइब्रेशन ऑफ अ पर्सन द कुक हु इज कुकिंग द फूड करेक्ट बट कांट वी चेंज द वाइब्रेशन ऑफ द फूड व्हाइल चैंटिंग अन्नपूर्णे सदा पूर्णे जो वाला जो चैंटिंग है जो भी किसी तरह भी खाना जो बना रहा है किसी भी भाव भाव से अगर हम उसको चेंज भी तो कर सकते हैं भैया थ्रू चैंटिंग एंड मंत्र अरे बाबा पहले तो आप ये समझिए पहले चीज को खराब करिए फिर उसको ठीक करिए बात समझिए सो द पॉइंट इज दैट वी शुड अटेम्प्ट टू हैव इट राइट इन द बिगनिंग ओनली ना सो व्हाट इज द एटीट्यूड विथ विच यू आर कुकिंग वी शुड फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट टू क्लियर दैट आज जो अपने भोग लगाते हैं भगवान को ये तो वही चीज हो गया ना कि वी आर डूइंग द भोग आप अनम्यूट करिए अपने आप को We are and please start your video so that I can see you. हाँ, हाँ. that's एक एक मिनट मैं आपको हाँ आप बोलते जाइए मैं एक बार करती हूँ. So the point here is this one call. You shut the call. She's gone. Rina, Rina, you have a question. I'm not gonna hear. Oh yeah, uh, there is somebody uh, gate ke pass me. That's why I went down to the gate. Open it. Just a minute. Ab, ab, bolte hey, uh, you are talking. Ah, no, it doesn't work like that. Rina, you have a question. Rina, do you have a question? You are you are unmuted. Rina is off. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, it just got uh, unmuted by accident. Okay, okay, no problem. Chalo, Shivangla, continue. Uh, yeah, ready. Yeah. So, why do you want to cure it? Now, the other thing is that what guarantee is there? The mantra that you are chanting will clear the field. Ha uh-huh. ha. Can you guarantee? There is no it? guarantee for anything. There is no That's guarantee. That's the point, right? So in the beginning only you have a uh, have purity. So, brother, uh, today we go out somewhere, go to the restaurant. Arey Baba, but, do the best you can, yar. Let's not get into what if. If we get into what if, there is no answer to that. Okay, so this was the reason that in olden days people didn't like to eat out of their house. Yeah, they did yeah. not have any anyone else's house because they didn't know what the vibration was. Absolutely. because people were more conscious of all these things right now we become unconscious the taste of the food is more important we are not concerned with the vibrations that the food is carrying so naturally we are, everyone is becoming more and more tamasic right yes yes so aggression is increasing all these things are increasing so as you start becoming more consciously aware of all this you will understand what is the vibration of the food you are eating Now it's not an easy thing to do. In the middle, it started happening with me. I used to test the food before eating every time. Half the food I could not eat. So you have to draw a line somewhere, right? You have to create a balance. You're right. Thank you, Bhaiya. Thank you. Chalo, Shongla. We then go on to discuss the fact. Mike, 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 Shyamla. We then go on to discuss the fact that no substance has the same effect on everyone, whether it is a sound, food, smell, or color. Each of us reacts to it in our own way. 
this is a wonderful example of the fact that we are all unique vibratory beings and that no one vibration or frequency affects everyone the same way so again every one of us is different so we'll all react differently to any kind of stimulus that we are subjected to this same factor seems to also apply when encoding intention on sound some people can simply encode a specific purpose on a sound and voila there it is floating on the waveform others aren't able to do this some people may find it easiest and most effective to visualize intent as a color carried by sound others may work best by seeing complex geometries in their mind and project projecting them on into a sound still others are excellent at focusing a specific feeling or emotion on a sound they can project happiness sadness joy or gratitude with extraordinary ease so again every one of us has their own ability how to own own method technique one second shivangla every one of us has their own method of projecting of using the tools that's why robert monroe always said that i am we are providing you the platform we are providing you with the tools go use them and figure out how you use them and then go and explore go and experiment and then come back and tell us how it worked for you and that is how this entire process has grow, grown today every day every in each and every uh, connection that we make how the reball can be used that there are hundreds of ways in which the reball can be used and in every workshop that we have every advanced yeah. workshop that we have every six day program that we have because people have attended the previous programs they come and share how they are using the reball and let me tell you the repertoire has become so phenomenal it is not funny but everyone can't use it in the same way so some are better in some using it in one process some are better in using it in another process and that holds true for any kind of uh, quality or talent that you literally have christine you have a question christine please unmute yes 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 uh niket i just want to ask about the uh, these tools for intent i'm a little confused with visualization are they saying to visualize the healing that you want to have already manifested one, one, one second one second over here he is not saying you visualize or you don't visualize okay he says very clearly here some people may find it easier and most effective to visualize intent as a color carried by some so some people are visual they are more visual in the way they do things some people just add a feeling to that vibration to that intent to the sound some people may visualize it as geometric patterns which is riding a wave and going and curing a person so there are various ways of using the humming frequency to achieve your end now you need to experiment for yourself as to what works best for you okay okay so you mean a color or a design or whatever whatever so he is just saying that he is giving the various methods in which people use the humming to achieve a certain end okay got it he is not Thank saying you. you have to visualize he is saying that these are possible Okay. Thank you. Yeah. How to encode intent? Shivangla, your mic. You have to be conscious of it, please. How to encode intent techniques? We cannot give you specific instructions on the very best technique to use to program intention onto the sound, but we can say with confidence to do what feels right for you and what works the best. we will describe below some of the techniques that we have found to be effective in general we believe that the more relaxed you are and the more you utilize whatever modality works best for you 
the more effective you will be in the process of encoding intention so again what feels right to you what works the best for you okay this is a experimental thing you cannot say that this will work for everyone across the board yes there is a probability that this will work better but then it doesn't mean the other thing will not work, work better so it's always better to have a repertoire it is better to have many ways of doing the same thing in your toolbox so that if one thing doesn't work at a certain point in time we can always use the other now another thing he says we believe that the more relaxed you are the more you utilize whichever modality works for you best so again all these things when we are going into these expanded states when we are doing the act of healing if there is stress in my system then that is what i will project on the other person so it becomes very very important for us to do these things when we are relaxed fear has to go out of the window trying has to go out of the window in my thing effortfulness has to go out of the window it needs to be done in a very very relaxed and a gentle manner and that i in my view works the most effectively in achieving what we want to achieve we try to place as few limitations as possible on the practice of humming from our perspective having some fluidity in your practice being able to choose whichever method works best for you at any point helps empower you and your own innate capability of utilizing intent we trust in the spirit of the sound to give you the experience that will be for your highest benefit in the moment so again we have to be flexible we have to be fluid in what we are doing rather than being rigid uh, let me tell you my antennas always go up when anyone tells me that this is the only way to do something immediately my antenna will stand up because now what has happened they have created a box for themselves and they are stuck in that box because there are many things which are available outside that box now that's one of the reasons in awareness we have always encourage people to go and experience other things and when they go and experience other things we always tell them come back and tell us about it because if it is good then we'll tell others to do it right that is the basis of what we are doing we are not wanting to restrict anyone in a box that this is the best yes today i can say confidently that i feel the hemisync process is one of the best processes i know to achieve a certain end but tomorrow i may find something better i don't know so the idea here is not to restrict yourself to use the process in multifarious ways so that you can see what works because something may work in some situation it may not work with another situation so we always say time place and person so what may work at one time may not work at another time what may work in one place may not work in another place what may work for one person may not work for another person got that so we need to be fluid in the way we do it but with the caveat he says it in the lies for your highest benefit in the moment so whenever we are doing anything it's for the higher good it's for the highest good when we look at the four s's shreshth means for the highest good for all concerned that is the base intent and when we are operating from that base intent then very rarely will you go wrong because your intent is very clear that i want it for the highest good now in the short run what you are doing may not be for your highest good but it is for the greater good which is more important so you'll find all the spiritual masters were willing to sacrifice what was good for themselves for the greater good so this for the highest good becomes extremely important in coding with gratitude and thanks our esteemed colleague greg braden has noted that if purely visualizing or imagining something worked for everybody then affirmations would be a lot more successful so now this is important we there are so many pr- processes which keep talking about affirmations okay even in the monroe institute meditations there are affirmations but whether you are clicking with the affirmation 
whether you are feeling the affirmation whether you are actually accepting the affirmation becomes extremely important i'm just repeating something but i'm not connecting with it it's actually useless there are so many people who do jap ram 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 but they are not doing ram ram they have a meter and then they are they are pressing the meter so what are they doing are they doing the jap because are they connecting with that prayer or are they just doing that i need to count i need to do 10000 japs a, a day now doing that in my view is not giving them the real benefit of what they could derive from doing that prayer if they actually just connected with the prayer and even did half of that or even one tenth of the prayer that they are doing but just counting that means they are counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 they are not doing the prayer so this becomes very important are we connecting with the affirmation are we connecting with what we are doing is the feeling and the thinking going together because no manifestation can take place if one is my mind is telling me do this it's not correct to do my heart is telling me i would like to do it now there's a struggle there's a kashmakash until the heart and the brain are working together you will not be able to manifest stuff that's why it's very important to integrate the two as powerful as our mind is equally powerful stating an affirmation that does not resonate with your inner belief is not going to do a lot of good so now this becomes extremely important i am saying something but inside me i am thinking ye to nahi hoga so what is my basic intent what is the vibration i am setting out with that because i don't have any confidence in that but i am saying that so it is going it's like cutting your own feet you're for, you're destroying your own foundation it's extremely important this one for example if you don't believe that you are deserving of meeting the partner of your dreams or some other affirmative belief that affirmation is not going to be very successful in manifesting your desire so now in the way that we look at it from the monroe perspective monroe perspective we have bold now awareness perspective is that there are certain exercises which we call patterning so what we do in that is that okay what is it that you want to pattern for i want a good job i want this i want whatever you want you pattern for it you go into an expanded state of consciousness and then you release it into that state of consciousness and then you forget about it and then you trust that the universe will bring to you the opportunities that are required for the manifestation of that programming to take place because if you are going to start following it every time you are not going to be able to manifest it okay so if i am thinking i don't deserve a partner then that is what i am throwing out now how will i get a deserving partner so you have to be in that state of equanimity in that state of gratitude to be able to actually receive what you are wanting to receive most of the time we want something see one desire is pulling me that i want something the other desire is pulling me on the other side so there's no conjunction with the desires i want to be very healthy but i want to eat a pizza and i want to eat junk food now one desire is pulling this way the other desire is pulling this way so until the synergy between the desires and we are effectively wanting to move in the same direction with our desires it becomes very difficult to manifest things okay so our belief systems start becoming very important when we are using this process my emphasizes the power of feeling and visualizing an intention as though it has already happened and then giving thanks for it so now this again is a very important part whenever we are patterning it must be as if it's happening right now okay not happened it's happening right now so we pattern for the present moment and then we throw it out okay from his perspective gratitude and appreciation lead to manifestation feeling a sense of gratefulness activates the electromagnetic field of the heart which opens up the flow of positive energy so again gra- gratitude 
when we operate out of gratitude we open ourselves up to receiving okay so that's why gratitude becomes extremely important even in the monroe institute's affirmation the last and the fourth caveat is gratitude so if i'm not grateful for something i can never get something else so in in the vastu process when we are doing energy field rectification for anyone when we go into their houses there's a frequency it's actually for the navel i call that the acceptance i call it the happiness quotient okay i call it the happiness quotient because it it shows acceptance if i don't accept something if i'm not grateful for what i have i will never get what i want and if i'm not full of gratitude i'm not grateful for what i have i can never be happy so if i want to be happy i have to be operating out of gratitude and then gratitude is what activates the energy of the heart and let me tell you the heart radiates a really powerful magnetic field and the vibe the amount of the, the amount of feeling that we can get through that bioenergetic field which is generated by the heart is so fantastic it's not funny the heart sends more or the feed our body system sends more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart okay so the heart sensitivity is generated through its biodynamic field the magnetic field that is generated due the due to the pumping of the heart and a lot of information is gathered by the heart which sends it to the uh, brain so over here the electromagnetic field of the heart which opens up the flow of positive energy this becomes extremely important we believe that this method feeling our intention as though it has already happened and giving thanks is an exceptionally potent way to encode intention onto a sound dr joe dispenza agrees in his book you are the placebo he points out that when you are expressing gratitude for something you act as though it has already happened expressing gratitude for the manifestation of an intention is powerful and effective when we want to begin resonating energetically in a beneficial manner this is quite important to remember when we are humming so now when we feel that something that we desires already happened don't you think you'll feel happy you'll feel elated and that's when you you're humming or you're using that process to project that so which side of the grid are you now again we come back to the resilience grid where if i'm feeling happy about something i'm naturally on the right side of the grid and that is when i'm sending out that intent from that is when i'm sending out that vibration from so the power of manifest you know if i'm on the left side of the grid i'm thinking it's not going to happen it's not going to happen it will not work i don't deserve it and then i'm trying to manifest and say, send some intent it is not going to work so anything when we are doing these things it becomes extremely important for us to assess what state of consciousness am i operating am i on the left side of the grid or the right side of the grid and then send out that intent because manifestation which is uplifting will only take place when we are on the right side of the grid along these same lines the people at hartmart institute focus on the energy of appreciation in the area of the heart as part of a technique that builds heart brain coherence so again that we have something called the ans the autonomous nervous system in our body system that takes care of most of the functioning of whatever is happening in the body now when we when we go into appreciation a balance gets created between the two branches of the ans which is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system and when we are operating in equanimity in the middle of the two then i can move this way or that way as required and when i'm in that equanimous state the the resonance which is created in the system makes the brain and the heart also go into coherence so as i was saying that your mind is thinking something else your heart you you want to do something else you feel you want to do something else they are not in coherence but when we do this when this balance comes then the thinking and the feeling 
they start getting into coherence and that is when manifestation starts taking place heart brain coherence occurs when our brain waves and the rhythm of our heart synchronize this is an aspect of entrainment which we discussed previously the focus on appreciation is also an example of the power of intention so entrain what is what is entrainment when something is vibrating at the frequency of something else and when something is vibrating and it causes something else to vibrate at the same frequency this is what is called entrainment so when the heart is vibrating at a certain frequency and which is very very powerful and very very systematic it starts affecting the heart, brain also to start again vibrating at that same frequency and then because these two organs the heart and the brain they contain they control literally everything that is happening in our body system the whole body also starts to go into resonance or starts getting entrained and vibrating at that powerful frequency heart brain coherence seems to amplify the electromagnetic field of the heart and make it greater than that of the brain some say that this form of entrainment makes the electromagnet electromagnetic field of the heart 50 times stronger than the brain's field others estimate that the field becomes as much as 500 to even 5000 times stronger so again the the field of the brain can be felt you know like literally 1 inch away and at the institute of heart heart math they have actually measured the frequency being radiated from the heart with instruments about a kilometer away so you can imagine how much more powerful the vibrations and the electromagnetic field emitted by the heart is whatever the actual numbers might be there is definitely an amplification process that occurs when the heart and the brain are in coherence this is a great technique for opening up the positive flow of energy heart math institute has even developed a portable battery operated device that teaches people how to achieve heart brain coherence so this is called the inner balance or it is called the em wave we have the equipment maybe we will uh, ex- I'll, i'll demonstrate it to you all so you all can actually in that instrument you can actually see where you are operating what's your heart rate heart rate variance whether it is in the sympathetic side in the uh, in the parasympathetic side where are you operating whether there is coherence or not all that stuff you can see on screen Our beloved mentor Sarah Sarah Benson shared with us many years ago something that continues to resonate with us to this day. It is this: the true sound of healing is love. And indeed, if there were one thing that could be encoded upon sound that we could recommend wholeheartedly, it would be the energy of love. So now, today, a mother when she is making her baby sleep, what does she do? they singing a lullaby you make some vibratory sounds and you put the baby on your chest and you you'll find the baby will resonate with that and then the baby will also start to relax and again the intent of love when it is added to that vibratory frequency becomes extremely potent okay however the concept of encoding and projecting love can be challenging since there are many different meanings and understandings of the word love some people may have had unpleasant experiences in the realm of love and thus have had great difficulty in working with this specific term we have found that simply allowing the thoughts and feelings of appreciation to come to mind can be quite helpful in a positive and beneficial frequency so again so when we when we say that think of love now today husband and wife relationship for example there will always be ups and downs in the relationship you've had a fight so everything is not good about a particular relationship everything cannot be hunky dory all the time okay so the idea here is that you need to go into appreciation so it's better to appreciate something in nature which doesn't have a negative connotation for you 
or pets can become a very very nice way because generally speaking you don't have any negative uh, thing associated with a pet my go to thing of appreciation when i want to go to i have mentioned this before is that when i was in school in darjeeling my bed was here and the window was here an entire kanchenjunga range with the colors changing whenever i want to go into appreciation i just remember that particular scene and immediately i am taken into a space of stillness and there now of course we've got many more tools to do i've got a space in f27 i've got a space in f34 so i can even go into those spaces and it will immediately shift me and create that balance in my system okay so again if some negative connotation is attached to something and you start thinking of that it will immediately shift you to the right uh, left side of the grid and you will go out of coherence so it becomes extremely important for us in this system to watch where we are and the simplest way is the grid figure out where you are on the grid and be on the right side when you do humming for encoding anything that you want to encode for okay i think we can stop there any questions or any one wants to say anything no one wants to say anything okay so then we meet for meditation either i have started thank all you. of you or uh, i don't know what's happening yeah well, thank you it was very nice ram ram thank you thank you thank you for the wonderful session what has ram 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 thank you nikhe and i'll definitely let you know if the uh, time of the uh, of the training is yeah. up yeah yeah no problem aunty i'll just speak to her i'll speak yeah, to her speak to her otherwise I, i'm trying to uh, not do it at that time yeah But if i told it happens then i'll let you know theek hai no problem aunty okay no problem okay so see you all at uh, 3:15 i uh, sorry 3:45 acha there are many chats i didn't see the chats nothing much kuch nahi hai chat mein ha chaliye theek hai bye bye ram ram bye.